It seems like just yesterday, every single musician had Vivo, Vivo. in their YouTube channel name, Vivo in the bottom left of their videos, and there were even YouTubers putting Vivo on their diss tracks because so that it they made would them get look videos. more official. Yep. But this has left people with a few questions like, what even is Vivo? Why was their name on every single YouTube video? And whatever every happened to music it? Video. Well, it turns out that Vivo was a big scheme cooked up by the music industry that eventually failed. So to Wait, understand that, girl's that an artist? big scheme I cooked up by the actor. music industry. I thought this was an actress, like a Disney actress. <gasps> True Jackson VP. That eventually failed. So to understand that, we got to go back to Vivo's inception. Vivo was created back in 2008, when the music industry was recovering from quite a few problems. See, back in the day, music videos used to be aired on TV, on platforms like MTV, NBC, and more. This way, the Ooh, producers so and off. artists could that, get money oof. directly from oh, the no, networks so and their wrong. advertisers. Sorry, but then the internet came in and disrupted everything. CDs and records were being replaced by illegal file sharing Lime services wire. like Napster and LimeWire. Because why? Why would you buy was... something when you can just get it for free? So as you Lime may know, this was made legal? the music industry I that very, was legal. <laughs> I guess, not very profitable. I Things like Lime Spotify Lime. and iTunes were just coming out, so the industry hadn't really figured out how to make money. That's why they came together and created Vivo. Universal Music Group and Sony Music Entertainment both got together in an evil corporate fashion and created Video Evolution, or Vivo for short. If those Video names sound Evolution. familiar, that's because UMG and oh, Sony are two of the... Evo. Big three record labels, which means that these three labels own pretty much every other smaller label. They thought that Monopoly. by creating Vivo, they could find a way to monetize music videos, and they did. What we're trying to do is quite simple, which is to provide a high quality, premium music and video experience to as many people as possible in as many places as possible. On any television, on any computer, on any phone, on any connected digital platform, we want to provide the highest quality, premium music and video experience. So we do that today <clears throat> with our partner YouTube. Mm -hmm. So about 70% of music videos worldwide are consumed and discovered and, uh, and viewed through On YouTube. YouTube. So what Vivo does is provide that experience inside of YouTube with the world's largest music companies. The issue though was that YouTube was only monetizing like 3% of their videos at the time, while platforms like Hulu had ads on all of their stuff. But YouTube had been working with these record labels and wanted to keep music videos on their platform because that was one of their biggest sources of views. So YouTube yeah, and true. Vivo came to an agreement. Universal, and eventually some of the other labels I mentioned, would put their music videos on YouTube and Vivo would distribute them. Google hosted them on YouTube and Vivo's website as well. Mm. Vivo was also Mr. in charge Bright of selling fire ads to song. advertisers. Most ads on YouTube videos, like the one you're watching right now, are sold pro programmatic are sold programmatic <laughs> are sold programmatically, where advertisers <laughs> bid on a certain type of customer demographic, <laughs> like specifically targeting which country they are from or what age group they belong to. Wow. This is very common, I'm sure most of you understand that. Yeah. But Vivo instead would sell specific slots to advertisers, which makes a bit more sense because you can imagine that appearing in front of a Drake video is likely going to get you more attention than throwing your ad on a Matty Balls video, for example. It's kind of <laughs> like how advertisers kill to be in the Super Bowl. I'm sure they've had quite a few bidding wars over Taylor Swift's music videos. Not because they're good, but because she gets a lot of views. Also on long videos like Oof, interviews bro, gonna have like to that, they can sell slots ass. for ads during the video as well. This oh, way, Vivo is able to make quite right, a bit saw, more money from YouTube ads than your everyday YouTuber. So with all of that sorted out, Vivo got like $300 million in investment money, and they were preparing to launch they acquired some other labels as distribution partners furthering the music video monopoly and then Ugh, they were ready to launch vivo launched on december 8th of 2009 Damn, one of my old 30, jobs. videos on their website from huge artists like eminem lil wayne michael jackson yeah. lady gaga yeah. kesha miley cyrus yeah. and many more yeah. the website actually crashed on launch and in the first month got over 35 million views apparently they had already surpassed other websites like aol music MySpace music, and MySpace, Warner oh my music, gosh, and more. I remember I was it. seven when all of this was going down, so hearing about MySpace music is new to me and pretty interesting. Nah. Regardless, Vivo was going crazy. I remember you would get on my, my like profile European page on MySpace and the Mexico song would start playing. I can't remember what song. got the other big three record label, Warner, to sign with Time them as a cable. content distribution partner. And they were also distributing videos on MTV.com, which was a whole lot cooler back then. At this time, Vivo was getting most of its views, 80% 
percent to be exact from youtube because vivo was a conglomerate of pretty much every big record label and small one and they distributed these videos to youtube that's why every artist had their own vivo page like eminem vivo or rihanna vivo that's I also remember why those. pretty much every music video in the early 2010s and even up until this day have vivo in the bottom left corner or right i can't remember but that still leaves us with one question what happened to Vivo and why did I say they failed earlier? Well, they huh. had a problem. Vivo Monopoly. wasn't making that much money as an actual company. Oh. Most of the money was going to YouTube and then to the record labels, leaving Vivo to pick up the scraps. Apparently, okay. Vivo was also very expensive to run because of everything I mentioned. So pretty early on into the company's life, they tried to find a buyer for $1 billion. Oh my God, that's the music video for AO. Didn't really work wait, out. Wait, so Vivo had to try to find a buyer for yeah for one billion dollars how do i know that off the top of my head because i love that video i love your i love the loyal video too first they started making other types of content on youtube and their own website like interviews live stream concerts and things along those lines i remember although that content was never super successful yeah they released an app i would go on their pages and see it and be like what the fuck i want to see the video actually very successful by early 2011 they were bigger than facebook and right behind youtube for video viewed content by the end of 2011 vivo was getting over 3.7 billion views a month they had over 13 million downloads of their app and they had made over 150 bucks 150 bucks and they had made over 150 million dollars in revenue but like i said most of this money was going to youtube and the labels not to vivo and because they didn't want to rely mm. so much on youtube they tried to diversify they created something called vivo tv that was supposed to be like hulu and they were also on apps like roku apple tv and more it's see they spread they themselves too thin in my opinion they started doing all this extra shit i guess i know you wasn't making a lot from youtube but you were still profiting something they're, and then they started spreading themselves too thin. Okay, let's make another website. Let's make interviews. Let's pay these artists to come on and do interviews. Let's do this. Let's do that. Lose, like actually plotting to become something like Hulu for music videos, where they wanted people to pay a monthly subscription to watch these music videos. And so we think there's a, that, that one of the important things, and you hear this throughout the industry, that the move towards subscription, a, a more premium product, that's something we're very interested in and very much you know uh, working towards. What is, that's a subscription service or, or does the whole thing go behind a paywall do i no, have to I pay think, to watch Katie no Curry? we believe we believe in a dual revenue stream this was a rumor for a while but after consumers have had music videos for free for so long it's very unlikely that would have ever happened Regardless, for a while, yeah. like I just said, their diversification was working, but it didn't last long because in 2018, everything came crashing down for Vivo. Vivo had a few controversies that really 14? hurt the company. And I'm not talking about the that was working, but it didn't last long because in 2018, or when they were, I'm not talking about the time some executives were ironically caught watching pirated content or when they were That's trying to nuts. work with Facebook to get people's info for targeted videos. The main issue they had was in 2018 when they found themselves in the crosshairs of some hackers from the group Armine. First, the hackers got oh, into Vivo's Armine. servers and released three terabytes of their documents and videos. Then they got hacked again. This time, two hackers named Karoy SH and ProSox got into Vivo's YouTube channel. When they got in, they deleted Despacito, which was the most viewed Vivo video on YouTube, <gasps> and they also renamed a ton of the videos as well, changed some thumbnails, and apparently this was some sort of pro-Palestine protest. Oh, I'm not nice. sure how much these hacks really affected Vivo, but it seems like everything started crumbling after this happened. The CEO stepped down, a bunch of important executives left, and they had to lay off dozens of employees. At the same time, Vivo was really struggling to compete with YouTube. It seemed like them putting their content on other websites or making their own website was a way to distance themselves from YouTube, so that way they didn't have to pay all of their revenue to YouTube. But that clearly didn't work, as YouTube is still the number one site when it yeah. comes to watching music videos. Plus, and then they the did the Warner, the Warner fucking logo at the bottom. YouTube just launched YouTube Music, so Vivo never became the Hulu or the Netflix of music videos. Instead, Vivo decided to wave the white flag. Vivo decided to shut down all of their other operations and just merge with YouTube to become a regular distributor. YouTube merged the Vivo accounts with the artist's official accounts to consolidate everything. So if you were subscribed yeah. to a Vivo account, your subscription would be switched over to the official artist account. YouTube said, I remember Vivo's that. reach in business can continue to grow on YouTube as a direct result of simplifying the user experience through consolidation of an entire artist catalog into one channel where vivo videos are featured prominently so basically like agario youtube just ate up vivo <laughs> 
This is probably why it feels like you don't see the Vivo branding as much. I mean, we're all probably used to seeing the Vivo logo in videos, so we don't notice it very often, but it is still there. It's just that the channels don't have Vivo in their name anymore. And Vivo yeah. is still pretty successful after the merge with YouTube, as they have over half a million music videos that get over 26 billion views a month. You can still go to Vivo's so website they still and get check money, out their bro. content and their artists, but it always redirects you to YouTube. They also still host their videos on Pluto TV and Roku, but let's be honest, cares? no one's going there to watch yeah. music videos. Like Medium.com said, without assassinating YouTube, there really wasn't enough room for both of them to coexist. The consumer isn't Which ever is going fact. to go to a second location for the same product they can get at the first. Yes. So just because it looks like they aren't there, Vivo is still there operating in the shadows. However, Those their plans get. to take over the internet as the go-to music video service failed. Like Jordan Fraser said, Vivo isn't dead, it has regressed to the bottom of the video screen. It exists today as branding you'll continue to see on most music videos. It also exists as a reminder that the entire music industry is run by only a few people in expensive suits. If you like this video, mm. you may like my video about some of the worst marketing attempts in the music industry, as mm. many of these Vivo era artists came up with some really dumb- I was really wondering what happened to Vivo, bro. I remember that shit, bro. Channels used to always do that shit. Put the Vivo logo down there so they can get views, bruh. 